Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokta. Many questions remain unanswered as controversy sparks a blame game. In 2011, when the then Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak announced that the Malaysian Navy would purchase six littoral combat ships or LCS for six billion ringgit, many Malaysians were startled. The LCS are frigates that can perform complex naval missions of modern warfare comprising anti-air warfare, anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare and electronic warfare. One former civil servant said the cost was almost as much as the entire 211 military budget and asked if it was really necessary. And coming so soon after the Scorpion submarine scandal, some wondered if this was another opportunity for certain people to make inflated commissions from the deal. In the early 2000s, there had been a public backlash when the government announced that it would acquire the French-made submarines. The defence minister at the time was Najib. And some wondered if the country really needed the submarines, while others were worried about the annual service and maintenance costs. A decade later, the nightmare of the Scorpion submarine scandal is still fresh in their memories. For many Malaysians, their fears were compounded by the fact that there had been no open tender. The contract had been drafted in such a way that it did not favour the government and after it was signed, no action had been taken to address the various anomalies which annual auditing reports had uncovered. The government issued its letter of award to the main contractor, Bausted Naval Shipyard Sindirian Bahad, or BNS, in December 2011, although the contract for the project was only signed in July 2014. Now, the Defence Minister at the time was Ahmad Zaid Hamidi, but by the time the contract was finally signed, Hishamuddin Hussein was in charge of the ministry and Hishamuddin was the minister, minister of defence from May 2013 to May 2018 when Harapan won power. But Harapan was taken down by the Sheraton move and Hishamuddin again became the minister from August 2021 to November. 2022. What made matters worse was that the needs and opinions of the end user, the Malaysian Navy, were dismissed. Observers said because in July 2011, Bausted was said to have persuaded Zayed to swap the original Sigma system, which was of Dutch origin, to the French Goin design. Expressing his concerns and detailing the risks associated with um, by detracting from the original agreed plan, the then Admiral of the Fleet, Abdul Aziz Jafar, was reported to have written 10 letters to the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, the Defence Minister, the Chief Secretary to the Government and the Defence Ministry Secretary General. He failed to elicit a response from any of them. Now, the original sum of 9 billion ringgits should have been sufficient for 12 patrol boats. But before these could be built, various issues such as paying off the bad debts of the main and some contractors had first to be settled. This reduced the amount that could have been spent on building the frigates, the LCS boats. Now, as a result of Bausted's alleged bad financial and management decisions, the cost of the patrol boats then ballooned. Despite paying off 67% or 6 billion ringgits for the LCS boats, which by any standards is a hefty sum of money, no patrol vessel has been delivered to the Navy, nor has any been hundred any boat that is been 100% completed. The first frigate had been due in 2019, 
the final one in 2023 this year. Now, the LCS scandal has sparked the usual blame game. Many questions remain unanswered, and some of the important ones are these. Number one, why was the end user not consulted about the swap in design systems? Number two, did the government exercise due diligence before engaging Bausted in this costly project? Number three, how did the government fail to act on the annual Auditor General's reports? Number four, when will these frigates be delivered? When? By the time Bausted gets his act in order, most of the defence systems will probably become obsolete. And number five, what will it take to stop corrupt politicians and incompetent government officials from repeating this scandalous racketeering? Number six, what happened to MACC's, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission's final investigative report? Number seven, who will be made accountable for this betrayal of both our armed forces and the rakyat? And number eight, will heads roll or will it be business as usual to the next nightmarish government procurement? And finally, why do we repeatedly fail to learn lessons from past mistakes? Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.